Today, I'm doing the ultimate white pen comparison. I have bought every white pen that I could get my hands on to help you find out which ones are the best and which ones are best left on the shelf. Hi, I'm Sarah, and it's my goal to help you get more creative in your everyday life. So for the last four years, I have been using my Uniball Signo Broad as the white gel pen of choice to do all of my highlights and all the details on my coloring pages. The thing is, I never stopped to consider that maybe this wasn't the best option. So today I have got my hands on every single white pen that I could find and we are going to be putting them to the test. So I wanted to make sure this test was as thorough as possible. So instead of just doing it on the colored paper, I've decided to also do it on each of the different mediums that I find myself using regularly when coloring. So first up, I have two different kinds of washi tape. The first one is a premium washi tape, and the second one is just a cheap washi tape I picked up from Kmart. So the difference being the premium has a bit of a finish on it, whereas the cheap one is very paper-like. Next, I have pencils. And so I've used a Prismacolor pencil, which has a wax base and a Faber-Castell pencil. Then I've colored this section with a highlighter to see how it works on highlighted sections. Then we have a Copic marker, which has an alcohol base. We also have a Sharpie marker, which is also an alcohol-based marker. So then I've used a Tombow Jewel brush pen for the next section, and I have used a gel print. Before we get started, please make sure you press like and subscribe and turn on your notifications to check out every new video that I put out once a week. I've also included a link in the description below to the full blog article where I have written up the comparison of each of these and included links so that you can check them out for yourself. Now, first up, we have the Pentel Hybrid Gel Grip DX. Now, right off the bat, I'm really impressed with this pen. It is really smooth to write with. It's not skipping, it's not scratchy. The color is fantastic. It's easy to draw with. And it's working great on both pencils and markers and highlighters and everything I've tried it on. The color is fantastic. <laughs> I hope they're all this good because so far I am very impressed. Next up, we have the Jelly Roll. Now there's actually three sizes that I'm doing this test on, the five, the eight, and the 10. The five is actually a little bit too thin for my liking, but I'm sure it'd be good for some people. The eight and the 10 were a bit better. and. Look, I've heard this pen really raved about a lot and on the black paper, it was wonderful. It was really silky smooth to write with, but it did let us down a little bit on the pencil test. In terms of going on top of colored pencils, neither of the Jelly Roll pens really stacked up. On markers, it was great. So a good pen, but not for colored pencils. So next up we have the Sakura Glaze. Now this one really caught me by surprise because when you first draw, it is completely clear. So I thought maybe this is a glaze. Literally, it's not a white pen, it's just a glaze. So I actually tried to do a patch of color instead of drawing. But as you can see, I was surprised to find out it did turn white after about 20 to 30 seconds. So look, it's an interesting pen. Personally, not one I would use because I like to see my results straight away and I did find that it almost let out a little bit too much ink as I was drawing. So not a personal favorite, but a very interesting pen. Next up, we have the Pilot Juice Up 04. Now this is a very thin pen. I'm not sure if they make a thicker range, so maybe that would affect my view of this pen. But for me, I wasn't a big fan of this. It was too thin. It actually barely showed up and it wasn't smooth and nice to write with like some of the other pens had been. It was a little bit scratchy. And as you can see, didn't work on pencils at all. Next up, we have the Pentel Hybrid Gel, which I'm guessing is related to the Pentel Hybrid Gel DX that we started with. Now this one is pretty good, although I have to say, I think the DX did just slightly better. This one is still smooth, smooth, still nice to write with, still works on every single one of our options, but it just wasn't quite as smooth. I really like the little bit of extra ink that the DX gives that makes it just that bit nicer and almost a bit more therapeutic to use. Now, before we did the Pilot Juice Up, this time we're doing just the Pilot Juice gel pen. And I'll be honest, I am completely underwhelmed. It, even on the black, it kind of disappears as you write. And so it's a very, very faint color. The line is very thin. And on top of some of these other mediums, you can't see it at all. So not one that I would recommend if you're doing it on top of artwork. The Zebra Sarasa pen, 
didn't really fare much better. It didn't work at all on the colored pencil. And it was a very thin, very faint line on all of the other mediums. Even on the plain paper, I found it just felt a little bit scratchy and really wasn't that big, vibrant white that I'm looking for. So not a fan. Next up, we have the Sakura Souffle. Now, this name intrigues me, and this does remind me a little bit of the Sakura Glaze that we tried earlier. Just like the glaze, it starts out clear and it becomes more white over time. So not a personal thing that I'm keen on because I like to see what I'm working with as I go, but the white that it produces at the end is actually a very good white. So if you don't mind the weight, this is a pretty good option. Probably not one I would personally choose, but still a decent pen. So Sakura have been doing great with their options so far. Next up, we have the Sakura Bull Sign. Now this one, I wasn't such a fan. It didn't really work on the washi, didn't really work on the colored pencils. And while it did work on the markers, it was a very fine line, very faint. And look, it was okay. It's an okay pen. It's definitely not one of my top 10. Next up, we have my classic, the Uni Ball Signo Broad. Now, I have to admit, as I am doing this, this pen is actually four years old, whereas the rest of these pens are new. So while in this instance, I feel like some of these other pens have performed better, I do sort of wonder whether maybe I'm weighting this unevenly against the Signo Broad because it is four years old and it has been a great pen for me. I still recommend this pen, but I don't know if it necessarily slips into my top five in today's video. Next, we have the Uniball Signo Angelic. Now this one is very similar to the Broad and it probably does write a little bit more smoothly, which is maybe where the Angelic comes from in the name. Still didn't perform great on the pencils, but it does perform quite well on the markers. So look, I don't know if it's one of my top recommendations, maybe not quite one of my favorites, but it is still a very good pen. Next, we have the Yasutomo YNC Gel Extreme. Now, I definitely wouldn't call this an extreme gel. It is very much like many of the other white pens that we've covered so far. Doesn't work at all in the first washi tape, but I think that's more about our washi tape at this point because we haven't had much luck. And it doesn't really work on the colored pencils either, so probably not one that I'd recommend if you're wanting to do extra details on your coloring pages. The Sakura Decorose is next. And again, Sakura have created a great pen. I have heard great things about this one. And this is probably the first pen on my list so far that has worked on every single medium, including our painful washi tape that's not really letting us draw anything. So I am very, very impressed with this one. It probably falls in my top three or top five at this point. Um, it works on the pencils, it works on the markers, and it's a great white color, very easy to use, very smooth to write with, very impressed. Okay, next up, I decided to throw in a correction pen because I have heard people suggest that you can use a correction pen or a whiteout as a white pen. Now, Faber-Castell usually produce great things, so I gave them a shot with this, but let's face it, this is not designed as a pen for drawing and the results show it. This was really hard to write with. I gave up halfway and it really didn't work on a lot of the mediums. So let's leave the correction pens for correcting. <laughs> Now the Teranishi Magic caught me by surprise. I thought it was a paint marker. So the first thing I did was break it. I thought that I had to press the nib to get it loaded up like you do for so many paint pens, but it turns out you don't. And so instead I just busted it. Um, so warning with that one, it is not the traditional kind of paint marker. It does, however, produce a really nice writing. Um, this is another one that starts clear and brings up the color as you go. It's not, it's more of a felt pen. It's not like the other gel pens. So while it's not one that I personally would use and it didn't really work in the pencils, if you like more of that felt pen feel, then this might be something worth looking at. Next, we have the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. This is not a gel pen. This is a felt pen and it writes beautifully. I've chosen the large size in this example, but they do have a small size available as well. And this worked fairly well on all mediums. It's not as bright of a white as some of our other pens. I feel like you could maybe go with a few layers because it's fairly easy to write with. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily one of my favorites, but if you are wanting a thicker line, it is a fairly good option. Now we move into the paint markers and you do need to give all of these a really good shake before you use them. First up with the Pilot Juice Paint Marker. Now I instantly love this because I expected paint markers to be a lot messier. I expected it to be a lot harder to get a thin line and yet this works really well. 
Great thing is too, it seems to work on all of the different things. And to be honest, the lines I've produced have actually been just as good as a lot of the gel pen lines. So I was really impressed with this as my first sort of real paint marker that I've used. I expected it to be a lot harder to draw with and a lot thicker. So this one is definitely at the top of my paint marker list so far, even though it's the first one. <laughs> Sharpie on the other hand have let me down. I love my Sharpies, but they're oil based paint marker. I don't know what this is supposed to work on because it doesn't seem to work on the black paper. It doesn't seem to work on the blue paper. It doesn't seem to work on any medium. I actually don't understand. I'm sure that there's a reason, but to be honest, I was very disappointed. So not really made for coloring pages, maybe not made for this kind of artwork. Now the Delita Neo Pico Line White Marker is another paint marker that you do need to sort of get started. You need to press a bit on the paper to get it going. But once it gets going, it is fantastic. I really love how much detail you can do. The quality of this comes out like the gel pens with how easy it is to use. It's a very, very strong white. It has turned out fantastic. I'm definitely going to be using this pen on all of my coloring pages, pencils, markers, everything. It's working great. One of the top of my list so far. Next up, I have a Mitsubishi Uni Paint Marker. Now this is simply one that I found at the shops. I thought, why not give it a go? And I was a little bit disappointed to be honest. The colors aren't that white. It's probably not made for coloring pages, might be made for something else. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really work in this instance. And finally, the Posca pen. Now I've heard wonderful things about this Posca pen. So I was very disappointed with how mine turned out. And look, I have a feeling I might've just got a dud because I have seen lots of people's artwork with Posca pens and it definitely, definitely looks much better than what mine has turned out. In my instance, I barely got any white out of this pen. So I might have to check that one out another time. But for this test, unfortunately, the Posca fails. All right, so I think I found my favorites. Now the Hybrid Gel DX was definitely one of my favorites of the gel pens. I've got that here somewhere. Oh, there's so many white pens. Um, here it is, the Gel DX. I did really like how that worked. That's the one millimeter ball, so it's a medium size. That's a great size for me, and it seems to work pretty well on all the different kinds of mediums. So that's definitely a favorite. I did like the jelly rolls, but I was a little bit disappointed at how they performed on the pencils. So when you're using markers, you can see they come up really well and all three sizes actually were quite easy to work with. They did feel like jelly, they rolled really well. So I think they live up to their name, but not really ideal for drawing on pencils. So they get an honorable mention. The souffle surprised me because it didn't show up very white straight away, but as you can see, it did get whiter. So I think that's still in my top because it has worked on every medium. Although I didn't like that you couldn't see what the results were straight away. So I'm a little bit of a tie with that one and the pencil hybrid at the moment. The Uni Bull Signo. Now this has always been my go-to until now, but it was interesting after using some of these other ones, this felt a little bit scratchy. Now that could be because I've used it so much. So maybe I need to buy myself a new one to do a proper comparison. And as you can see, it worked great on some, but not the others. So I'm actually gonna pop this one away. It's no longer my favorite. The Angelic, on the other hand, if you are going to buy a Signo, was a lot nicer to write with. Although the end result compared to some of my other gel options isn't quite as good. So that's an honorable mention for that one as well. The Decoresse by Sakura was definitely a favorite when I was drawing. And I actually am quite impressed with the different quality of lines that it has produced. None of the colors really worked out all that well on the Tombow. They did darken, but it would be interesting to see if you went over them a few times, if you could get that brighter white. So we'll see how that goes. But I actually really did like that one and it was very easy to draw with. Now, when it came down to the paint markers, I have two favorites and they really surprised me. My previous experience with paint markers is very thick lines and very hard to use on traditional art, but these were really easy. I loved the Delita, I think that's how you say it. It was such a fine line and it worked and it looked really white on almost every option. I really like how it turned out on the pencils and being a paint marker, it was actually quite easy to use. So that is definitely in the top five. And the Pilot Juice paint marker was quite impressive as well. It has come up really, really well on almost everything. And again, it was very easy to use, so easily in the top five. 
Now, almost none of the pens worked on my first washi tape, so that's less a reflection on the pens and more a reflection on the coating of the tape. Not to say the tape isn't high quality, I think it's fantastic, but it's not really meant for you to write on. So that's fine. It was worth checking out anyway. The normal tape with the sort of paper finish, you'll see it worked quite well. It worked just as well as the paper for most of the pens. I also noticed, so the pencils, most of them didn't really work that well. So if you are working with pencils, you will need to select one of these that I've chosen that worked quite well. Um, with the markers, they did kind of absorb some of the colors. So you might need to do a few layers if you're really wanting white or you might not need a straight white anyway. These have still come up quite well. And the gel pens, they all actually looked quite good on the gel pens. The only thing I'd say is that for me, coloring this big box with straight gel pens was quite a bit of work. So, but it's good to know that if you do do gel pens, doing highlights with the white is a good option. So as a final assessment, I have found it impossible to pick one favorite, but I have decided that my favorite paint marker is the Delita Neo Pico Line White. That just worked so well on everything and I was really impressed, really easy to use, very surprised, and I'll be happily using that one. And it's got a little picture of a cat, so that's a bit fun. <laughs> so that was great. I was using a 0.5 size for that one. So that definitely recommend, just make sure you give it a good shake before you use it. And the gel pens, I have a tie. I cannot decide between the Sakura Decoresse and the Pentel Hybrid G D Gel DX. They were both very impressive and I've done a little bit more drawing with them both and I will probably keep using them both. So I definitely recommend both of those pens. Very, very impressive. I would love to hear your own experiences with white pens. Do you have a favorite? Do you have one that maybe I didn't include on this list? please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And I have decided that I am going to give my Uniball Signo another go. I mean, this pen is four years old and it has been going strong. And it probably is a little bit unfair to compare it to all the brand new pens I just bought. So in my next video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite tips for getting the most out of your white pen. And I'm gonna have a new Uniball Signo purchased by then to give it one more go and see if our top five maybe is actually a top six. If you liked this video and found it helpful today, please remember to press that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. I put out a new video every single week, so please subscribe and turn on notifications and check out this other video that I've got for you.